Hey, you are back at Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. And in this episode, we're gonna show you how to do that with fluid and brake inspection. So let's get to it. Okay, let's have a look under the hood here where we can see the different fluids that we need to inspect. We have the power steering reservoir, the oil dipstick, the radiator fluid, the brake fluid, and the windshield washer fluid. So let's now have a look on the passenger side of the engine and we can see where the oil dipstick is. And just like in the oil change video, we see that on the dipstick there's a min level and a max level and the oil needs to be in between there. And then here's the power steering fluid reservoir and on my Jeep, it's 2018, for some reason the markings are on the back of the reservoir. I believe after 2018 they were on the front. And you can see how the markings are embossed on the container and then the first word at the top says cold and then it's max and min. So you should be checking the fluid level of the power steering reservoir when the engine is cold and it shouldn't go below the minimum mark. Okay, let's move over to the other side of the engine and as you can see here, we have the windshield washer reservoir and you can see there's no minimum and max mark. You just want to keep that topped up as much as possible to make sure your windshield is clean and safe. And then here we have the brake fluid reservoir and it's kind of hard to see the minimum and maximum marks so I've kind of highlighted them in this image. But as long as the brake fluid is between the maximum and the minimum mark, you should be okay. And keep in mind, as the brake pads begin to wear down, the level of fluid in the calipers will increase and the level of fluid in the reservoir will decrease. So observing this fluid level will also indicate to you what's happening at the brake pads. And here we have the coolant reservoir and the maximum mark and the minimum mark are embossed as well and difficult to see, so I've highlighted them in this image. But when the engine is cool, the level usually rests near the minimum mark and when the engine's warm it might be up to the maximum mark. So if any of these levels in any of these reservoirs are below the minimum mark, make sure you bring your vehicle to a mechanic so he can check it out. And that's all that's involved in the inspection of the fluids of your car. So it's kind of handy to be able to do it yourself so you know what's going on with your vehicle. And you don't need to pay anybody to do that. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at inspecting the brakes. This is the rear driver's side brake system. And we're just gonna swing around to the back here and I'm gonna highlight the opening in the caliper system here, which is where we'll be inspecting. But before we do that, I wanted to give you a little primer on how the system works so that you understand what we're looking for. So in this graphic, you can see the brake rotor and then the red rectangles represent the brake pads. And then that's the caliper piston inside the caliper cylinder. And then there's the caliper pin and caliper bolt. And then the caliper bracket, which holds all that together. So the way the system operates is after you put pressure on the brake pedal, brake fluid is sent through the brake line into the caliper piston. The brake fluid fills the caliper and it pushes against the piston. With increasing brake fluid pressure pushing the piston forward, the caliper piston pushes the brake pad against the brake rotor disc and pushes the caliper bracket the other direction. So the caliper bracket simultaneously slides along the caliper pin, forcing the other pad to squeeze against the rotor and stop the car. And the caliper boot compresses at this stage. So removing the pressure from the brake pedal causes the brake components to return to their original position. That's the brake pedal on, that's the brake pedal off. Let's have a look at this in movie form. So you can see with the increasing fluid pressure how the caliper pinches the brake rotor to stop the car. So the wear and tear will happen on the brake pads and on the rotor and everything slides on the pin and it's important that that pin is lubricated at all times. So important things involved in a brake inspection would be check that the brake pads have enough material and they are wearing evenly. Check that the rotor has enough material and is free of any scoring. And then check that there's no oil leaking from the piston or the brake line. Then check that there is the proper amount of brake fluid in the reservoir. Okay, back to that image of the back driver's side brake. I've 
put this graphic over just to highlight where the caliper cylinder is, the piston, the brake pads, and the rotor, and the pins. So if everything checks out, we'll have more than an eighth or two millimeters of brake pad, we'll have even wear, and there should be no leaks spotted. We'll have a problem if we have less than an eighth of an inch of brake pad, if we have uneven wear, and if we spot any leaks. So let's have a look now at the actual brake system. That's the caliper piston. That's one of the caliper bolts. There's the other caliper bolt. Now when those things operate properly, you'll have an even amount of wear between the rotor. So the end of that little screwdriver is about a quarter inch thick and there's at least about a quarter inch thick wear left on each pad. And when I inspect the brake rotor, things seem pretty normal there. There's no scoring. It's nice and even and smooth. That indicates to me that after that inspection, the brakes are operating fine. Now here we're looking at the driver's side rear brakes. I'm just pointing to the caliper pin. Those always have to be lubricated and functioning properly. It looks like the rotor looks nice and smooth and there's no unusual wear. And there's the lower caliper pin. And now we'll have a close look at the rotor and the brake pad material. I'll try to get in nice and close. And now you can see in the stop image that the pad to the right of the rotor seems to have a little bit more material than the pad to the left, just marginally, but there does seem to be a difference. And there's a lot of crud and debris all over the brakes. So that would be a good idea to have these brakes serviced so that I could lube the caliper pins and clean off all of that debris. Now these are the pins that if they were lubed and working properly, I wouldn't see any uneven wear at all. So that tells me that this brake caliper could be due for a minor service. And if you're interested in seeing how to do a minor service where you lubricate the caliper pins and the such, Make sure you subscribe and click that alert bell so that you'll be alerted when that video is released. And that's it for our brake inspections. Let's take a look now at our tip segment for this week. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. Hey, welcome to this week's tip segment. I want to talk to you a little bit about the lubrication required when you're considering doing the brake caliper service. There is a minor service where you would lubricate the caliper pins to ensure that the brake pads slide in and out and wear in an even fashion because once they stick or rust you'll begin to have problems with brake pad wear and caliper seizing and that can get expensive. So what I want to talk about is the kind of grease that you put on the caliper pins. So this is a product from Clean Flow. It's called Easy Slide and this is the type of grease that you want to put on the caliper pins to ensure that they work properly. It's a silicone based grease. I'll put a link in the description section below. Now this is another product, it's called Synthetic Caliper Grease and when you look at the label it says you can put this on the caliper pins. But the nature of this grease is petroleum based and that will impact the rubber on your pins and the caliper boot. So you could use this on the back of your pads or on the edges of the brake pads but you do not want to use this anywhere near the caliper bolts. And there are other products out there, but make sure when you're putting grease on the pins that it's a silicone based grease. So that's it for this week's tip segment. Let's go look now at our subscribers tips. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip is from our subscriber Val. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, I registered with Mopar Parts Canada Online and they emailed me 20% off promotions. Maybe your subscribers could do that too. Val, you sail. Hey Val, thanks for the tip. In fact, here's the coupon I got in the mail and I used it to buy replacement brake parts. I saved over $300 in MOE Mopar brake parts. Thanks for the tip, Val. So there you go. Now we've learned how to change our own oil, rotate our own tires, and while we're at it, inspect the brakes and the fluids. And in the process, you saved yourself a lot of money. 
Thanks for watching this series of DIY episodes and let us know in the comments section below if you'd like to see more. Until next time, this is Cheaper Jeeper TV helping you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. Take care.